Hello and welcome to the Bang Picks video for the Philadelphia 76ers at Miami Heat. I'm your host, Matthew Model for Lamps.com. Joined here by my resident NBA expert, Jason Gilbo. In a seven and a half point spread, uh, I think this might be the biggest one so far out of the semifinals, conference semifinals games. And uh, why is that, Jason? Give us a rundown on how this got to seven and a half. Yeah, I mean, it starts with MB being out. That's obviously going to be the big for at least game one and two. Um, and it opened at four and a half before that news hit. And I think that's a pretty fair number. Seven and a half is, you know, like you said, it's a lot for a playoff game. Um, the only ones that we saw more were in that Milwaukee and Chicago series, um, which was understandably so. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on in the series. I mean, in this is, Heavily injured. I mean, Jimmy Butler, you know, missed you know, the last game of the Hawks series. Um, he's he's due back. I think we see a lot of these guys play, um, even though they're listed as game time decisions. P.J. Tucker, Jimmy Butler, Max Dress, Tyler Hero, all guys that got, you know, five days rest. A couple were just lingering with some, some illness, uh, not COVID related. And then Butler had the knee inflammation. It's actually kind of wild to think that the Heat, I think, actually rested guys in a playoff game, knowing that they were going to beat the Hawks regardless. And they did uh, without Jimmy Butler, which is wild. I think it says a lot about them coming into this series. I think they know that they can win. I I worry a little bit about a game one letdown, um, just taking a little bit lightly. You know, you had such an easy series. I think Philly is obviously going to be looked at as heavy underdogs, especially now with them beat out. Um, but this is still a team that can, can be competitive. Um, I, I think the Heat win this game, but I think the 76ers actually do stay competitive. I think we see Maxi and Tobias Harris get obviously involved a lot more and Harden takes on, you know, a bigger role without Embiid. Um, it's still not the worst big three to have when you really think about it. Like I think seven and a half is a little bit steep for me. Um, we know the Sixers, you know, played some solid defense and, if the Heat are a team that don't really have their three-point shooting going, um, the offense isn't really clicking, and you lose a little bit with Kyle Lowry defensively, you know, not being out there. Obviously, Butler being back is going to help. Um, but I think the hardened usage is going to be enough to get them there. I think they're going to keep this one relatively close, and I'm definitely willing to take seven and a half here, knowing that, you know, Embiid was definitely worth a couple of points, but I think that he have a little bit of a letdown night kind of to kick things off and then bounce back more game two. This is maybe my ignorance shining through. I think personally, if you'd ask me just to play a little devil's advocate, I'd still go with the heat minus seven and a half. I just, I, I see what you're saying. I, I truly just don't think the 76ers put up enough points to cover. I mean, it's going to be close. It's not like I think it's a slam dunk pick. I'm with you that Vegas really set the line at a good spot. I'd probably just avoid it, I guess, is is a better argument here. But I, I do kind of lean the heat just because I, I think their defense is going to limit Harden to an extent that it's just almost impossible for the 76ers to win unless they get extremely hot from Maxi, from, I mean, some bench players, some... Basically, everyone's got to contribute to a level that I don't think is reasonable to expect to keep this game within, like three to four points. Um, and then when it's like five, six, seven, then you're starting to get into like the randomness at the end of a basketball game where it's kind of like, eh, I don't really, you're not, you don't really want to bet on who makes a three or who makes some free throws at the very end. So, I mean, unfortunately that's going to be just part of most basketball games because no, the spreads true. are set at, set at such a, such a precise number these days, especially when we get in the playoffs and we have all these, these sample sizes. Um, I mean, I, I get it. Like I said, I, I don't expect the Sixers to win here. Um, I, I think we've seen kind of – the Heat got a little casual, I think, in that series, and I wonder if that lingers in. I yeah. think we saw that, obviously, with the Celtics. Like, the offense looked awful against the Bucks because they were finally playing a defense that was actually playing solid defense, and they weren't playing the Nets, who just didn't do all the uh, – um, you know, the little things well. So I, that's where I kind of see the heat struggling a little bit to start things up. And, and who knows how really healthy some of these guys are. That's obviously the concern for me as well. Um, but I, I'm going to go with a little bit of the randomness of the three point, not completely being there because the Sixers, you know, were a team that defended three point line well this season. Um, and yeah, like you said, you know, Harden's going to have a tough time with Butler. 
but you know we've seen Maxi and, and Tobias like really rise to the occasion and you know they beat still a pretty good Toronto team even though they were dealing with some injuries themselves but full strength I mean you know they they made them look pretty bad so uh, I still think they keep this one relatively close but I get it are you touching the over under at all at 208 no no because it's it's one of those teams where like we just talked about the heat like if they're on and hitting, you know, this this is probably going to hit the over because it's just they're going to carry. It's going to be like a 110 game and all they need is, you know, I don't know, so many points out of the Sixers. Um, I, I don't even like any of the really the team totals either. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Let's move on to the player props. And uh, not a full slate, obviously, with the 76ers injuries, which kind of stinks. We're getting used to the good life on these videos where we, we just had everything to choose from. But now you really you got Bam Adebayo, Danny Green, James Harden, Jimmy Butler, and Tobias Harris, which is funny that Jimmy Butler's up there when, I mean, we all assume he's playing, but you guys can't get props for other players, but you can get it for Jimmy Butler, who's whatever. Anyway, go go ahead, Jason. Give me Give me a good one. Um, couple here. I mean, I like the Bama Adebayo over 10 and a half boards. Um, I think that's the best value when you factor in his overall numbers tonight. And, you know, he's, he's obviously going to be dealing with a lesser extent of not having Joel Embiid up against him dealing with those. Um, and he's also a guy who can match some of the small ball stuff if they do use like Tobias Harris at the five or go some different routes, but it's going to be a read at the five. This is going to be a mismatch for Adebayo. And, you know, I'm kind of looking at this game. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a little bit ugly on both sides, you know, shooting wise, I expect kind of a lower scoring game. I think Adebayo is going to have obviously a ton of, of rebounding chances and it definitely opens up a lot more without Embiid. Um, he had some up and down games, you know, really during that first stretch. I mean, with the Hawks, um, a lot of it was foul trouble. I think not having Embiid is obviously going to be big for him because he's not going to see that usage down low. And he'll be able to stay in the games. Um, he maxed out at 11 in that first series. I think he's going – it's going to be a close call, but I think he's going to be around it there. Um, and I think, you know, with less threes available, I think there's a little bit more short rebound opportunities for him there in this game too. Yeah, I like it. And – uh it's funny. I feel like one of the first days we started covering the playoffs, I made a comment that kind of staying away from steals. And I feel like one of us has taken a steal prop every fucking single game since. And honestly, they've been hitting. <laughs> so why stop now? Um, I wanted to get Jimmy Butler, but it's at minus 125. So maybe I shouldn't have even brought it up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stay away from it. I thought Butler over one and a half would have been plus 100. And I would have taken that all day. I, I do think he's going to cause some it's just going to be, I, I truly just have this vision and I, maybe I'm projecting too much of just a gut feeling that the 76ers are going to be a little discombobulated without a beat. It's just kind of like you don't have your safety net there for the first time in a, in a long time. Um, I don't know. I also hate James Harden. That's a personal thing. It's too personal. Yeah, no, I, I, we, yeah, we've definitely reached the grudge stage of the playoffs. We also know that discombobulated is um, each each round of the playoffs. You pick a word up, and you're like, "I'm going to use this as many times in the video as possible." It's the first it time. Just, no, it was. Uh, I think it was one of the Celtics games where you were talking about how discombobulated Durant looked. <laughs> well, I mean, but to be fair, it was correct. That was a correct. Yeah, that's true. Just like his mental state, his physical state was very discombobulated. Um, look at turnovers now. I, uh, James Harden's so juiced at minus 155 for over four and a half. It's just yeah. like, I, I mean, I get it because I would be betting the over if it was decent odds. Like, it, it makes sense that shoes. So you're just kind of hoping the, the sports books or the whoever's calculating it or the AI that does it is wrong. But it's not, I really don't have any props. <laughs> Like, looking at this, there's a lot of juice. I mean, threes. Jimmy Butler over a half at minus 215. James Harden over two and a half at minus 135. What do you want? From and the problem is, is, like, even these, they're starting to add these head-to-head, -head, yeah. you know, bets in here. And, like, are you even going to get me anything that's remotely close to, you know, some decent value? 
Yeah, there's no Embiid. I don't know. It's like minus 150 versus plus 120 for Harden Butler rebounds. That was just. It's just like there's such odd bets where it's like I, I feel like there's there's nothing really to go off of here. Yeah. Now let's let's wrap it up. The next one's super fun. Let's let's get out of this. Game. Right. So we got the Philadelphia 76ers plus seven and a half. If you're riding with Jason and then Bam out of bio over ten and a half boards, and somehow we created a what? How long has this been? Ten minute video giving you guys two picks. So congratulations. Hopefully you like to see our faces. There'll be more picks in the next one, and we'll see you for that Suns game very soon. Um, I forgot to say like, subscribe, do all that good jazz, but, uh, you know, go do all that good jazz. See you later.